Here in New England where I live, the fall is probably the most loved season. The leaves change, it gets a bit cooler, and nothing sounds better than cozying up in a warm blanket and cable knit sweater. It's the stuff people put quotes over to put on Instagram. But there's an underlying current to the first few hints of fall. We all know it's coming, we just don't know when. That beverage that's supposed to be reminiscent of comfort food to be enjoyed by a warm hearth. And all of a sudden people start posting memes of it with young women dressed in leggings and Ugg boots holding this seasonal beverage. While real women in leggings and Ugg boots are hashtag self-aware don't care about posting their own photos of them with today's topic. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind the pumpkin spice latte. But first, a quick message. I had the idea recently for a little side project called Podcast Share I'd love to get your feedback on. This would be a Twitter account that is run by a different person every week, and their only job is to tweet what podcasts they're listening to. Podcast Share will be starting up in a few weeks, and nominations are open for future Podcast Share curators. To find out more information, visit podcastshare.net, and be sure to follow at Podcast Share on Twitter for updates. We're going to dissect this particular topic in a bit, but first I'm going to do what I did a lot on my first podcast, the Classy Little Podcast, where my co-host and I would try a different wine and cheese every episode, but there's no wine or cheese for today. It's just pumpkin spice latte, and I feel like I'm one of the few who've never actually tried it before. So, here I go. Gah! Oh! Oh, what is that? Really? This is what you people go nuts over? Oh. Well, that's a thing. Let's get on with the episode, starting with the pumpkin. Pumpkins used in cooking weren't always as appetizing as they are today. Sure, pumpkin pie always had its place at the Thanksgiving dessert table, but before its popularity in modern-day America, pumpkin was known for being a food for peasants in Europe for centuries, most notably Italians. The first American Thanksgiving is depicted with all sorts of inaccuracy in history books and pictures, like showing pilgrims wearing buckles, eating cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes, and having a peaceful meal with their American Indian BFFs. But in reality, they did not wear buckles. Sugar to make cranberry sauce was too expensive of a commodity. Potatoes weren't part of an Englishman's diet at the time. And, well, white settlers and American Indians were not so chummy, to put it mildly. But pumpkins may have had their place at that table. But not in pie form, since flour and butter would have been difficult to come by. However, historians do surmise that pumpkins were hollowed out and filled with milk, honey, and spices to form a sort of custard. But here's the thing about the pumpkin spice latte most people have noted. It doesn't actually taste like pumpkin. And now I can verify that fact. When we hear the term pumpkin spice latte, the spice being referred to is actually similar to what McCormick Spice Company created in the 1950s called pumpkin pie spice. This was a blend of cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and allspice that was used to flavor pumpkin pie without having to measure out all the spices separately. Once cooks added it to other dishes like sweet potatoes, the pie got dropped from the name and became what we know of today, pumpkin spice. It would be a very long episode to talk about the story behind coffee, so I'll just skip right to the tiny chapter in coffee's history, the latte. The accent mark you sometimes see on the word is what's known in the English language as hyperforeignism, indicating a word is not pronounced in English how it appears without the accent. It's kind of a way to trick your mind into putting an international flair on an otherwise Americanized version of the Italian word caffè latte, which means milk coffee. The birthplace of the American latte is disputed, but one of the most popular claims was it was invented in Berkeley, California in the 1950s at a little coffee shop known as Cafe Mediterranean, or Cafe Med to those who knew it best, which supposedly included the likes of beatniks and activists like Mario Savio and Allen Ginsberg, movie stars like Dustin Hoffman while filming scenes of The Graduate, and even newspaper fortune heiress Patty Hearst before her kidnapping. 
Cafe Med's owner, Lino Mayoran, was an Italian-trained barista. And when Americans would ask for a traditional cappuccino, they were put off by how strong the flavor was. Mayoran was constantly telling his baristas to add more milks to their drinks and finally came up with an idea to create a menu item of the same amount of espresso as a cappuccino, but poured into a bigger cup with room to add more milk, and called it a latte, which means milk. Unfortunately, Cafe Med, after falling into disrepair, closed shop after 60 years in 2016. Fifty years after both pumpkin spice and the latte came to be, Peter Dukes and his team were gathered in what was known as the Liquid Lab of Starbucks headquarters in Seattle, Washington. By that year, 2003, Starbucks had had success with winter seasonal drinks like the eggnog latte and peppermint mocha, but they wanted to come up with something for fall. Even though it was early spring, the group sampled bites of pumpkin pie, followed by sipping espresso to see how the taste mingled in their mouths. It took three months to decide on and create the flavor for Starbucks' famous formula, which they still use today. More than 200 million have been sold, and that number is from 2014, so I can only imagine it's gotten much higher. And it's pretty easy to spot when the flavor comes back at Starbucks. As soon as signs pop up outside the coffee houses announcing its arrival, there are photos from my Instagram and Facebook feeds with people sometimes still wearing their August beach wear, holding their first cup of the new season. This year, 2017, Starbucks introduced pumpkin spice latte ready-to-drink containers, which was what I tried, and flavored ground coffee in stores. But if you're already pumpkin spice latte out, 2017's newest Starbucks offering may give you some variety. The pumpkin cheesecake latte. Information for this episode was sourced from History.com, Starbucks.com, The Chicagoist, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers who support the show through the Patreon page at patreon.com slash thestorybehind, Stargate Pioneer from gunnageek.com, Matt from the One Word Go Show, Sam Dunn, Diane from History Goes Bump, Scott Smith from Recovering from Religion, Dan Brennick from Netflix and Swill, and newest executive producers, Jared Dunham from thehistoryfile.net, Heather Welch from Sunshine and Power Cuts, and Jason Bryant from Matt Talk Online. And for those executive producers, I did a giveaway live on Patreon for a story behind Mug, which if you want, you can put your pumpkin spice latte in. So congratulations to Scott Smith from Recovering from Religion for winning it. And I hope you look forward to more giveaways to come for Patreon supporters. Thanks for listening. Oh, that's terrible heartburn. Oh, pumpkin spice heartburn. Ugh. Ugh. Oof.